In this video, I'm going to show you several examples of merging 2D and 3D animation mediums together, as well as showing you my experiment with drawing a character over the top of a 3D environment in Adobe Flash. 2D and 3D animation have different strengths and weaknesses. Therefore, sometimes it's an interesting option for a director to use a combination of 2D and 3D animation to get the best outcome for their film. 3D animation has the benefit of feeling more grounded in space with a more accurate sense of space and volume. The lighting and perspective and other complex calculations can be handled by the software, leaving the artist less tasks to do. 2D animation is more organic in how it feels and in my opinion it can be more expressive. It's not as easy as it sounds to merge 2D and 3D animation. Studios have struggled for many years and only with today's technology that's available is it becoming easier to do this. Um, it's often a problem where directors need to find creative strategies to overcome these problems of merging the two in a way which looks convincing. A lot of it comes down to small tricks and attention to detail. Um, the two mediums need to closely resemble each other in the level of detail and how that detail behaves on a moving surface. One of the ways I learn the different techniques of integrating 2D with 3D is just by looking at different examples in things like behind the scenes footage of feature films. Um, one of the examples of this is Tarzan behind the scenes and I noticed that they had hand-drawn animation on top of three-dimensional clips and I wondered how they did that. How they do this, I think, is that they print out the 3D animation onto sheets of paper and then those sheets of paper are what the, the key animator, in this case Glenn Keane, draws on top of. This was a, at least 20 years ago that they made this, so it was one of the earlier versions, but I, it's still really impressive and it still looks really good today. In this behind the scenes of Wolf Children, you can see that they kind of have the hand-drawn animation almost as like cutouts on top of the 3D camera movement, but you'll see that just as in the last clip, they rendered out the 3D animation first, they also did that in this one and then they drew on top of it once the camera movements had been finalized. In this behind the scenes of the Freak of the Week music video, uh, they had a really inventive way of using the 3D animation as this kind of scaffolding for the construction of the 2D characters uh, because in some of these shots, the movement of the 2D characters is very difficult to foreshorten, and so they created a sort of previs animation to their 2D animation, which they were able to then draw around, and it's really good because they were able to keep that expression that the 2D animation has, but just using the 3D animation for the complex perspective that they had to get. So I was really impressed when I saw how they made this animation. So one of the ways is just to create the 2D animation with a roughed out idea of what it will be when it's inserted into the 3D and then create the animation isolated from the 3D and then integrate the two in post-production in something like After Effects. So this is a very common method and really simple. So some of you might be thinking, uh, this is all good advice, but how do I actually draw over the top of 3D objects? Because if I could do that, that would be perfect for what I want and to do that with the tools that you have. So I've found a technique which works quite well for me. Um, I, if you've got a moving camera position or something or the 3D animation is moving and its angles are you know, constantly updating, then what I like to do is I like to um, fully kind of finish the, the 3D animation and then import it as a PNG sequence into Flash. Um, and you can do this fairly easily, I'll try and demonstrate it to you. So we're going to be animating 2D animation on top of a 3D camera pan and it should get some really interesting results. I'm going to show you how I got it like this and then we're going to get into it. So if I hide that, now we've just got the 3D 
Um, my friend made this and he did the camera uh, shift, he made all the environment and everything. I exported the video as a PNG sequence and then I brought in all of the PNG images onto a frame and then I did a right click like this and I went to, hold on, where is it? Distribute to frames, I think it is, distribute to keyframes and then that spread them across like this in order. So it's very quick and easy to do and once you do then you can have your 3D in here and then what I'm gonna do later is I'm going to take that off and just have the animation and export that as a layer and then bring it into After Effects to composite. So that's basically the workflow. I might talk a little bit more in depth about that another time, but for now I'm just going to be showing how I'm drawing over this uh, 3D animation. It's just something I scribbled out very quickly. This was just a, a rough idea of what how it's going to go, but now I'm going to uh, start again, I guess, for most of it. So aside from how I import the 3D animation, there's not much difference in how I animate the 2D animation on top. A couple of the things you'll see me doing is I scrub through the timeline quite a lot just to make sure that the character is um, staying on track with uh, where the scene is moving. And I've been putting down these kind of uh, linear guidelines, uh, especially on the stairs, which I found quite tricky. It was a nice little challenge, but yeah, I put down those lines to keep track and how I tried to align them was so that the lines would go find the midsection of the staircase and that was kind of like my anchor point from the 3D and the 2D. So I recommend doing that, finding anchor points in your 3D and tracking them along with the lines. One of the major changes that I make to my animation style is that I have to put it on once uh, at 24 frames per second. I can't space out the frames so that it's on twos or threes or anything like that uh, because then it doesn't align with the uh, the 3D environment because that's moving at 24 frames per second. So you don't want a big disconnect there in the frame rate and you can't really get away with working on twos or threes. Now, I was going to try and rotoscope some of the 3D animation, uh, such as the stairs. I was going to actually draw them out frame by frame by tracing over them. And I started doing this and I realized <laughs> this is taking me a long time. So I tried to go line by line, drawing out each line of the staircase. And I kind of added it up in my head. And I, I thought this would look really cool, but because the staircase was so complex with these straight lines, I worked out that it would just take me all day to rotoscope this tiny scene. So in the end, I kind of abandoned that and just went with uh, what I had. But ideally, if I had the access to the 3D source file, which I don't, but if I did, then I could apply some kind of tune shader um, effect to the export and make it look a lot more like it was 2D. Unfortunately, because I didn't have access to the staircase after animating this, I couldn't make those changes that I wanted to, which is why in the end, it's still kind of, there is this disconnect between the two, but it was a good experiment anyway, just to get the feel for how it is to animate on top of a 3D environment. So next time that I do it, I've got a lot of other things that I want to apply to it to make it look much better. Because of time constraints, I couldn't uh, do any more for it, but that was just like a placeholder. And I, in a professional kind of circumstance, I would, uh, I would clean it up a lot more. Okay, so I just wanted to explain what's gone on here. Um, I've now isolated this top layer, which is the girl running down the stairs. So I've just uh, hidden a few layers here and then I've exported it so that it's its own image sequence without the layers underneath. Um, so I did that by going export movie and then this is what it's saved as PNG sequence. And then that's what it's gonna turn out like, that, that image sequence. You can then bring that into After Effects, Adobe After Effects uh, quite easily, uh, which I will show you. 
import these image sequences. So you go file import image, I think, and then you select all of them. Select them, make sure you tick PNG image. Okay, that should do it. So it should be one file. It shouldn't be multiple files because that means it just sees them as lots of individual files instead of a string of files. So then you just drag them into here to create your uh, composition. The first layer is in there now. Uh, and you might want to change the composition settings. This is set to 30 frames per second. So I'm going to change that back to 24. And yeah, so I think that's worked. And now I'm going to bring in the other one uh, 3D test layer 2. I'm going to select all of them. PNG sequence, make sure that box is ticked. Open, done. So that's now an image sequence. Uh, let's just take this one out. Okay, so we put it in on a layer below. There we go. Okay, so it's exactly the same as how we had it in Flash now, but because it's on different layers, we can edit the two layers separately, which gives us a bit more flexibility. So I'm just going to change the colors of this uh, background. Thank you for watching my video. I have a website called Animator Guild. If you don't know about it, please go over there, check it out. I've got an online store there where you can buy equipment, downloads and books and all sorts of things. Uh, I also do workshops, which are like one-on-one -on -one if you need guidance on making your animation, other tutorials, source file downloads, you name it. It's all over on animatorguild.com. So I'd appreciate it if you go over there and check it out. See you next time. Goodbye. From the storyboard point of view, the angle is amazing. It's on a Dutch tilt. We've got these leading lines like coming here and here. They're everywhere in the frame and they're all leading towards this point. And you can see that the doorway looks pretty small and you're just thinking, how 